Um, bought you a little gift. Oh my gosh. Some um, Sussex honey. <gasps> Sussex honey, the best. Oh wow, thank you very much. <laughs> I'll make Pleasure. sure that Pooh Bear doesn't come and steal that from wow, me. Wow, yeah. If there was one food that you could have for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, that's really hard. <laughs> just one? Yeah, just one. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, do you know what I really love? I love maple syrup. I would say I'd prefer it, darling. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can, I just feel like it's really versatile. You can put it in all sorts of things. Controversial. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I go with that. Um, and you've obviously worked with some great people before, so Chris Evans and Kenneth Branagh with Cinderella. What was it like working with Winnie the Pooh? Um, it was, what I loved about it was that you're walking into a world that is already so known and so beloved, so it felt like a real privilege. Um, and these books have endured, you know, generations. Um, and it wasn't, when I heard Jim Cummings' voice though in the trailer, that's when I felt like it had really come alive for me. Um, that was a voice that I had grown up listening to yeah. and associating with, with Winnie the Pooh. So for me, when I heard that voice, I knew that we'd done it right. Oh, I do like a party. Come on, Pooh. What should happen? If you forget about me. Silly old bear. I won't ever forget about you, Pooh. I promise. Not even when I'm a hundred. And this is your second like live action mm -hmm. Disney film, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What was it about this one, apart from the voice that yeah. sort of brought you on board? Uh initially it was the I really wanted to work with Mark. I had a great chat with him and I, I was curious that a man who had done things like Monsters Ball and Stranger Than Fiction and World War Z is then doing a Winnie the Pooh film. Yeah. Um and I felt that he, he said that he wasn't going to shy away from the sadness of, of a lot of what Christopher Robin goes through. And I felt that that was, was right, that it wasn't just going to be the kind of shiny, happy, um, glossed over version of this. That in it there was going to be some kind of truisms that, that, and some wit, poo witticisms where you bring out the philosophy and the wisdom um, of this bear and what he has to teach adults. And talking of um, poo, pooisms, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if you had to sort of live by, if there's one motto that you could live by, what would it be? I like when he says, um, people say nothing's impossible, but I do nothing every day. <laughs> I'm thinking that in, in a world where there's a lot of talk at the moment of this idea of mindfulness and being present and meditation and being able to take time out from social media and being disconnected from our, our phones, I think, He's offering having a bit of a you know a bit of a break or, uh, from you know the pressures of everyday life. So I think that's something that I I kind of taken with me. Oh, it would appear that I am stuck. Have you just eaten honey? I have not just eaten honey. I wonder which way. I always get to where I'm going by walking away from where I have been. Do you? That's the way I do it. Is there one thing for you from your childhood that just really takes you back to that place whenever you think of it, or if there's a special toy or anything? Well, I was like, I had, I had dolls, I had trolls and Sylvanian families, but um, the best. Yeah, I, I mean, when I think about my childhood, though, I think about like. I was like crazy about Freddie Mercury. <laughs> and like that was, uh, yeah, or like, or the labyrinth I was kind of crazy about. Those slightly, the, the, and J Jim Henson world and uh, the dark crystal and kind of, the, 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 yeah, those kind of darker worlds, I suppose. Um, I mean, I liked Winnie too, but I think I was kind of a quite a, yeah, an eccentric little kid who was into kind of different things. You know, I watched the Rocky Horror Show when I was eight and I was like, this is amazing. Um, you know, so kind of obsessed with, with Frankenfurter uh, since from being a young kid. And my mom's like, OK, totally accepting, but like each to their own. Just I was, go with it. Just felt very kind of my own, my own person when I was a kid, yeah. <laughs> you must be Madeline. Wait, you're the bear in my father's drawings? Yes. Do you know where he is? I do. <laughs> Let's bounce! Um, at Cine World, we have so many film fans, and we always love to ask people, what's your favourite thing about going to the cinema? Oh, wow. Um, I think the the all-encompassing experience of it, that when you're watching a film at home, it's not the same, because you're in your own surroundings, you can get distracted, people can come and go, you might make a cup of tea halfway through, might pause it, but when you're watching a film, 
it's not going to end until it's ended and you go on this journey that I think is a lot more consistent from beginning to end and it can be that much more affecting and when you're just in that dark room with a group of strangers who all go through a similar journey to, to yours it can be it can be moving it can be a, it, cathartic but it's certainly the most I think satisfying way to view something and as films are made to be seen on the big screen I think that's you know it's, it's I think films are always better on the big screen and in the dark Digger! Eel! Piglet! If anyone wants to clap, now is the time to do it. Oh, mother. I don't remember being cheery. <laughs> People say nothing is impossible, but I do nothing every day. No, Poo, that's not the... Oh, never mind. <laughs>